Hi everyone, first I would like to welcome you to this semester's macroeconomic course. We start from chapter two, national accounting, GDP and price levels. For this course, we have several targets for this chapter. The first, we are going to learn how to measure output in nominal terms, which means its dollar value. The second is to measure the output activities, which means the real output level. And the third is to measure price level. There are various kind of price level that we are going to track. To understand this chapter thoroughly, of course you need to read chapter two from the textbook. In addition to that, I will recommend you to read the article from the Economy Magazine regarding the underground economy. We start from GDP. What is GDP? First, start from nominal GDP. We learn nominal GDP in our EC101 course. Basically, it measures the dollar value of all the final goods and services that the domestic economy produces during a specified period, such as a year. In this slide, you notice that there are four phrases that has been highlighted. One is dollar value, the second one is final, the third one is domestic economy, and the fourth one is a specific, specified period of time. So we are going to go through some of these uh, highlighted terms in the following uh, lecture. First, let's consider final. Which one of the following items is considered a final product? The answer actually depends. If you think bread is the final product, you are already thinking a process that there must be some seeds that has been planted onto the ground, turned into wheat, and some farmer harvested the wheat and milled it into flour, and then some baker has bought it and baked it and turned it into bread. In this case, indeed, bread will be the final stage of output. But sometimes, C turn into wheat, turn into flour, and then stop there, since uh, some farmer just cannot sell the flour to some baker. In this case, flour will be considered as the final stage of the production chain. Then flour should be considered as the final output. And by definition, it should be included in GDP calculation. Now we have to look at domestically produced. Remember, GDP only consider things that are domestically produced. Therefore, anything that's not domestically produced should not be calculated inside GDP. For this example, consider these two different final goods. Which one should be considered as part of GDP? I think the answer is very obvious. Apparently, the one on the right hand side, foreign produced baguette, which is worth $8 million, should not be considered part of GDP. However, when you look at home produced bread, even though at its market value, it's worth $4 million, but whether the entire $4 million should be considered as domestically produced value, it actually depends. You have to go back to its production process because uh, the bread might use the ingredient not only, from f not only from flour, but also butters. Consider this case that flour is home produced, but butter is imported. In this case, actually, the four million value of the final goods of this bread does not really reflect the entire domestic produced value. There is two million dollar value that should be deducted. In this case, actually, the domestic produced value of this uh, home bread is actually only $2 million. So far, we have learned how to compute GDP by counting all the final goods that's produced within a given time, which is this year in, this exam in our example. However, by doing so, it is very time consuming and not really practical. So a common way to calculate GDP is to consider who bought it. That is computing GDP from expenditure side. The idea is that we look at the whole economy to see who can buy stuff that's produced by our domestic uh, producer. So apparently there are only four different types of agent that can do so. One is household, the other is firm, then government, then foreigners. 
So for the GDP amount of uh, goods that are being produced, there is X amount that has been purchased by foreigner, which is called export. And deducting X from GDP will be the remaining amount of domestic produced goods that can be consumed by three agents from home country. Other than that, actually, those three agents, household, firms, and government can purchase not only those locally produced, but also some produced by foreigners, which is denoted as M. We call it import. Therefore, the total amount of goods that domestic household, firms, and government can consume will be GDP minus X plus M. When it's go to consumers or household, we will use the notation C. For the part that go to firms, we use I, and we call it investment. And for the part that go to government, we call it G, which is government expenditure. Therefore, it is very evident that GDP minus X plus M will be equal to C plus I plus G. A more commonly used notation would be GDP equal to C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Now we have learned how to calculate GDP value. It's time to move on to calculate its real term. Real GDP is the measurement we pursue to measure the true production activity under an economy. For example, suppose the economy only produces two types of goods. One is iPad, the other is orange. In 2003, the economy produces three iPads and 500 oranges. And through time, it might, changes. it might change. 2004, there are seven iPads and 300 oranges. And then 2005, five iPads and 100 oranges. Then which year has the most production? It is really hard to tell because there are more than one type of goods that has been produced. So one way to look at the production level is to look at their nominal value, which is nominal GDP that we just learned how to calculate. So we look at the price tag for both items for each year. So for 2003, um, the iPad price is $5 and orange is 5 Therefore, the total value of the output would be $2,515 and follow the same logics. 2004 price tag gives a $4 uh, price tag for iPad and $6 price tag for Orange. Totally, we would have a nominal GDP of 1,828. And 2005, uh, follow the same reason, then we got the nominal GDP to be 735. However, it, it, is it really uh, reasonable to say that 2003 has the highest production level it's really uh, not proper to say so because when we calculate the nominal value, then the change of price tag can change the value dramatically. So one way to solve the problem is to use the same price tag for every year. To follow the same logic, we first choose a base year and use the base year price tag to price all the products from other years. So if we choose 2004 to be our base year, then we will change the price tags for 2003 and 2005 into the price tags of 2004. Then use the same price tag, we recalculate the value of uh, all the products. Then in 2003, the value will be 3,012. And 2005, the value will be 620. So based on these three figures, we will say that 2003 has highest real GDP value, which means it has the highest real output. Now we move to price index. Price index basically is a price track on a certain basket of goods. So it depends on the, what kind of basket you are talking about. To understand the content of a basket, you need to know what's the purpose of the price index. For example, if you are talking about price index of consumption, usually we'll call it CPI, consumption price index, then by definition, we are tracking a basket 
that is relevant for household consumption. So it's very natural that we will ask a question, what basket of goods do typical household buy in a given time? So usually government will look at um, household's uh, typical purchase in a given period of time and define what commodity should be in the basket. Then we use that basket as something that we are going to track for its price change. So for this given basket, in 2001, it would cost household $1,000. In 2002, it would cost household $1,500. In 2003, it would cost household $1,200. So these three price tags basically track the price change of the same basket over time. However, when we use the word index, it means that we would normalize the price tag by using the price tag of a base year. First, we choose a base year. Here, we choose 2002 as our base year. By choosing 2002 as the base year, we are going to divide the price tag of every year by the 2002 base year price tag which means we would divide all the price tags by 1,500. So for 2001, we will have 1,000 divided by 1,500. And uh, usually, we will time 100 to scale it back so that we'll get the number 66.67. And that will be the price index for 2001. And the price index for 2002 would be the price of 2002, 1,500, divided by the base year tag, 1,500, and times 100 again, which would give us 100. Actually, by definition, base year price index will always be 100. Then for 2003, we divide 1,200 by 1,500 and time 100 again, then we get $80. So. Following the same calculation, we are able to construct the price tag for the basket and normalize it. So this will be the price index of consumption 